What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode. If you guys are staying up to date with my channel and the Audi, you guys will know that this thing is disgusting. We detailed the inside, now it's time to detail the outside. I'm gonna begin by cleaning up the dirtiest parts of the vehicle and then working to the cleanest parts. So because the only part of this vehicle that's really been detailed is the wheels, the door jams, and the interior, the dirtiest part at that point is then going to be the engine bay. So if you're ever detailing your car, that is pretty much the first place you want to address. So after the engine bay is cleaned up, we're gonna then move to the wheels, and then after the wheels are cleaned up, we're gonna go to the exhaust, and then finally, the paint. Now the paint is the most sensitive area out of all of this, so if you can address the dirtiest parts first and then work to the not so dirty stuff, you'll be good. Because at that point, you're not gonna be introducing any of this really disgusting stuff into the clean areas. I hope that kind of makes sense. But the first step is going to be changing out of your clean clothes because you are 100% gonna get dirty in this process. If your engine bay looks like this one, you're gonna get dirty. So I'm gonna change out of this white shirt and I'm gonna put some more grubby kind of stuff on so I'm not gonna get covered in crap. Okay, so I'm back and I don't really care about this shirt so it can get dirty. Now, if you guys have been staying up to date with what we've been doing, I've been including links in the description box for everything that we've done to this Audi so far. So if you guys bought the same kind of stuff that we used to clean up the wheels, and you guys bought the same kind of Meguiar's Super Degreaser to clean out the inside of the car, you'll have everything you need to clean out the engine bay. Now, for the engine bay, it usually is quite dirty, it's quite disgusting, and quite neglected. Now, because of that, we can't just use a regular car soap to clean out the engine bay. So because the outside of the car always gets hit with rain and dirt and all that stuff, it's usually not that bad. But any areas that aren't exactly exposed or aren't exactly high traffic areas, they get accumulation. So the engine bay is one of those areas along with the underside of the doors, along with the door jams. So you can use this super degreaser to clean out and remove all of that stuff. So we're going to be using this along with most of the wheel cleaning brushes that we use to clean out the wheels. They do a very good job of getting in some really weird areas. We can really push them down in some hard to reach areas and it will do a very good job at cleaning out all the grime. To begin with the engine detailing procedure, what we're first going to do is we're gonna get everything wet. So if your hose has a mist option on it, I would use that so that you're using a small volume of water to get everything cleaned. You're then going to want to use your Meguiar Super Degreaser and spray it down on everything. Now if you can also spray it into your brush, it's going to make the cleaning much more effective. Now if your engine has leaks, if it has some other fluids that are coming out of it, more often than not, the engine is going to be more greased up and disgusting than an engine that doesn't leak. Now the reason being is because that fluid is going to want to attract and hold onto dirt, whereas something that's dry isn't going to want to do that. So if you have to, switch up the brushes that you're using to get some more harder to reach areas so that you'll be able to also get areas like the sides of the engine bay, the front of it, and also the back side of it. They're usually pretty hard to reach areas, but if you have a variety of different brushes, you can get that cleaning procedure done rather easily. For the stuff on top, I like using a soft bristle brush so that you can get all the small intricate areas like in between the brake lines and stuff like that and you can do a very good job of cleaning out the small areas. So because everything on top is what you see most, that is the most important part of it. So if you can remove all the dust that's like in between stuff, you're going to get the engine bay looking a hell of a lot cleaner and it's going to look detailed rather than just clean. Now another brush that you probably have at home that can be really handy for this kind of stuff is a toothbrush. If you have an old toothbrush lying around, you can use that for this engine detailing procedure. However, once you're done agitating everything, you can grab your hose and then rinse it down. Now depending on your engine bay, you might be able to have cleaned it in that first shot, but if not, you can use the exact same procedure where you spray down the degreaser onto the engine, agitate it with a brush, and then rinse it down again if your engine is very dirty. So as soon as you're done and you're content with the results, you can then go ahead and dry the engine. Now it's important to dry it before you go and drive the vehicle again because anything that's wet is going to want to cling on to any kind of dust or dirt and then at that point you're making your engine dirty again. So if you have options like a compressor or a leaf blower or something like that, it'll do a very good job at removing all of that water. However, you can get by by just using a couple towels and even a hair dryer or any other option that you guys can think of. You don't really need to get anything really hot, you just want to blow all that water out or absorb it so that it's not left on the engine. After you're done cleaning the engine, you should see a huge difference just from that alone from before to after. So if you have any dirt, if you have any grime or anything that's just sitting on top, you can clean it up and you can make the engine look like it's well taken care of. We're going to repeat the same kind of procedure for the engine bay for the wheels so that we can clean them up. 
So first off, you're gonna start off by spraying everything down with water so that everything is wet. Now any light dirt or anything that's just sitting on top of the surface should rinse off by doing that single procedure right there. Following that, we're gonna be using a dedicated Meguiar's wheel cleaner to clean up the wheels. So if you have dirt or if you have brake dust or you have any kind of discoloration or dirt that's on the wheel, this dedicated wheel cleaner it should break down all that grime and it should make it so that we can clean it off very easily. Depending on the wheels that you have, you're gonna be using an assortment of different brushes. So no matter what wheel I ever have to clean, I at least have to use this one brush. And this is a soft hog hair bristle brush from Wheel Willies. It does a very good job at cleaning up the surface of the wheel and it also does a very good job at cleaning the tire itself. So it's strong enough to clean up all that grime but it's soft enough to not damage the paint on the wheel. Now following that, you're gonna be using a different kind of brush to clean the barrel of the wheel. So for this Audi, I'm gonna be using a easy detail brush like this. However, this company also sells other different brushes that you guys can pick up to get different jobs done. So depending on the application, you would wanna use a different brush. Because I have a couple cars, I actually have all of these brushes here at home because they're so good and so handy to get all this stuff done. Now you can also use these brushes to clean out your engine bay, your fender liner, the undercarriage. So these brushes are very handy also when you're not just cleaning wheels. After all that brake dust is knocked off of the wheel and then absorbed into the solution, we're going to rinse it down and just rinse it off. You're going to want to get everything from the face of the wheel to the tire to even the barrel so that none of that wheel cleaner is sitting there or left to dry on the wheel. Now to do all four of these wheels, it should take you about 10 minutes depending on how dirty they are. However, if you use the proper tools and the proper cleaners to get this done, it'll take no time at all and you'll be able to see the amazing shine and glow of that nice looking wheel. The paint on this Audi has definitely been neglected. It has 100% seen better days. Now, just because it looks like this doesn't mean that the paint is exactly trashed. So what we have here is the top part of the clear coat that just has a couple imperfections in it. The substrate and the paint itself is in actually pretty good condition. It just means that we have to put a little bit of work into it to get it to shine again. To begin, I'm gonna use some concentrated Meguiar's Hyperwash in my adjustable cleaning gun. You really don't need to put too much of the concentrate into the reservoir because it can be diluted. With just that little bit of soap that's in there, you can fill the rest of the reservoir with water. Now grab the top part of the cleaning gun and thread it onto the bottom. After that, you can attach it to the nozzle that's included when you buy the foam cleaning gun. Now at that point, you're basically ready to knock off all the loose dirt that's on the paint. What we're gonna be doing in this step is just pre-rinsing the vehicle to get as much of the stuff that's on top of the paint removed. So if we can remove all the stuff that's just sitting on the paint, it's gonna make our cleaning step easier because when we break out our wash mitt, we're not gonna be pushing all of that stuff into the paint and grinding it into it. Now, if we weren't to do this step, if we were not going to do this, what we would actually encounter is we would see more scratches in the paint after we clean it than before. So by taking the time to do this properly and pre-washing the car, you're gonna be preventing the paint from getting more damaged and more scratched during this whole cleaning step. So pretty much all that you're going to be doing for this step is you're gonna be rinsing down the entire vehicle and spraying it in soap. You're gonna begin at the top and you're gonna try and work your way around to get the entire thing covered. Now, if you can also let this sit for a minute or two, it's going to make it so that the stuff that's embedded or stuck to the paint is going to want to come off a lot easier. This soap does a very good job at stripping back all the stuff that you have on the paint. Now, an alternative to the hyperwash, if you want, you can use regular Dawn dish soap or palm olive dish soap, whatever kind you guys like. However, it has to be the unscented version. Now, once you do that, once you spray the entire vehicle, let it sit, and then after that, rinse it down. Now that's going to complete the pre-rinse step and it's going to clean out the entire surface that we're going to be working with. So once we have to do the proper cleaning step where we clean the panel, it's going to make it so that half of that stuff that's on there now is all gone. Following the pre-rinse comes the wash itself. So we're going to be using the exact same foaming cannon that we were using before. However, in addition to this, we're also going to be using a wash mitt to clean up the paint. So at this step, we're gonna actually be touching it with our bare hands. We're gonna be actually putting pressure on the paint to clean it up. So the technique that I like doing is I like spraying the whole panel down with soap. And then afterwards, I like spraying a little bit of soap in front of the wash mitt and then glide it over the paint. Now the reason why I like doing that is because I can always have the pad fully covered with soap it's fully lubricated and there's not gonna be any chance of me scratching the paint because the wash mitt will get too gummed up or covered in dirt. So if I have a lot of stuff, if the car is very dirty, I'll spray in front of the wash mitt to clean everything up. 
Now at that point, it's gonna be super safe. It doesn't matter what kind of car you're working with. It can be a supercar, it can be whatever car. It's going to give you the safest clean possible doing it this way. So if you wanna protect your paint and not make it look bad, this is the technique that I would suggest doing. There is an alternative method called using the two bucket method. However, I still find that that quite isn't as effective as this. Now, every time that I do make a pass over top of the paint, I look at the wash mitt itself to inspect it to see if there's any dirt. Now, if it is pretty contaminated or if it does get really gross, I'll just spray it down with a wash soap and then repeat the entire procedure until the entire car is clean. Now, at this point, there isn't going to be much that's going to be left on the car. So because we started off with working on the top of the vehicle and worked our way down, the paint itself should be very clean. Now just something to note is that the lower portions of the car are going to be dirtier than the top parts. And the reason is it's closer to the ground, it's closer to the wheels, and that's where most of the stuff gets thrown up to. So just take note of that when you guys are actually washing the car. You need to put a little bit more time and attention into that area so you don't introduce swirl marks or scratches into the paint. You can choose to just leave your car like this and even on its own, that will do a very good job to clean the car. However, we're gonna be going a couple steps further to actually refine the scratches and make the paint look brilliant again. So because the paint still does have imperfections in it, it has scratches, it has stains on the clear coat, we're gonna remove all of that stuff and give it an amazing shine that's gonna be like nothing else. Even though the paint has been cleaned, there are still contaminants that are going to be stuck to it that need a little bit more persuasion to remove it. You can use a clang sponge or a piece of clay. I find that the sponges pull off finer contaminants from the paint, but if it's heavily contaminated, I find they don't do as good of a job as the old school clay bars. You can choose for yourself which one you wanna use as every single car is different, so it really depends from car to car. Regardless though, we need to fully strip back and remove all of these surface contaminants before we start polishing the paint. You're gonna to wanna to repeat this exact same procedure that we're doing to the hood to the entire vehicle. Now the reason why you wanna do that is because you don't wanna have those surface contaminants being pulled up and make the polishing step a little bit harder because we didn't remove it now. So if you can remove all of those contaminants now, you'll be making the paint super smooth so that if you get your hand and you apply it and rub it onto the backside of the paint, you won't be able to feel anything. If you can still feel something, you need to clay it more so that we can strip all that stuff back. Because the Audi was extremely neglected, you'll see that the paint looks in this kind of really bad finish. So it's really strange because all the water and all the contaminants that have ever beat on this clear coat, they haven't ever been cleaned or restored or refinished so that you get that nice optical clarity out of the reflection. So because this has been so neglected for so long, after we clay it, we can see that the paint doesn't necessarily look so good. But that's not a problem. This is just how it's going to look when you're doing this procedure. Now, if you have a car that isn't quite as neglected as this, you're not gonna have to see this ugly shine to it. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm gonna be using a dual action polisher along with a polishing pad and some polish to clean all this stuff up. So off camera, I went ahead and just detailed a small section of the hood to see how the polisher and the compound, how it would react. So because every single car is different, every single clear coat, every paint, it's all different. So you have to do a kind of test area to see how that little section is going to work. You can pretty much base the entire car off that little section. So once you have an idea as to how it's going to work and what finish you're going to get afterwards, you can continue and do the entire painted surface of the vehicle. So I began using my Roops LHR 15 polisher along with a Meguiar's microfiber polishing pad. So because the paint looks this bad, I'm going to be using the microfiber version of the polishing pad, and that's only because it's going to be able to pick up a lot more dirt, and it's going to be able to pick up a lot more of that ugly clear coat that's left on top of the paint. Now after this is done, we're going to be able to move down and refine this even more by using a different pad to clean all this stuff up. So if you can tell, there are some holograms in the paint which are basically little scratches that are still left in the clear coat. Now to refine those, we're going to be using our Meguiar's M105 polish, the same polish we were using from before. However, we're gonna be changing out the polishing pad that's on the polisher with a foam polishing pad instead of the microfiber one. Now this foam one is a lot softer on the paint and it's going to give us an amazing, beautiful clarity out of that paint. The reflection out of it is going to be unbelievable. And it's very important to do that step because if you were to only just go ahead and use the microfiber pad and only polish the paint with that, you will still have some scratches left in the paint. Now they are going to be super fine. They're not really gonna be really big. However, they're still going to be noticeable, especially when the sun hits it. When I see detailing videos on the internet, I'm kind of skeptical on how the paint looks at the end because a lot of people can make any kind of paint look 
half decent or polished, even though it's not really polished. The way that I look at the paint and the way that I inspect it to make sure that the paint is crystal clear, there's no scratches left or anything, is I play around with lighting. So if you can bring the car inside, you can bring the car outside, and also if you can use a flashlight or any other kinds of light to reflect it off the paint and have that light bounce back into your eyes, you're going to see if you have scratches in the paint or not. Now it doesn't matter if they're deep, it doesn't matter if they're very, very minute, but you will be able to see all of those scratches in the paint. That step I think is the most crucial part of all of this because if you can't exactly see the scratches that are on the paint, it's going to be difficult to remove them. So that's why taking your time to actually inspect the paint is very important. Hopefully after all of this, you guys will be able to take some of these tips from this detail and apply it to your car. Hopefully you can make your car look just as good as this Audi. With the paint cleaned up and polished up with the Meguiar's polishing pad, the microfiber one, we're gonna follow that up with the foam polishing pad. Now the reason is because we're gonna be able to remove many scratches, even more by using this kind of procedure. So take a look at this line right here. So right here is where I polished up the paint. I used the microfiber pad and I also used the foam pad. So take a look at the reflection that you're seeing here. Okay, now if we go over a little bit, you'll be able to see the reflection of just the polishing pad, the microfiber one. So you can see that there are still scratches in the paint and we need to refine those scratches even more to something like this. Now the way that we do that is with, right here, we've got our pad right here and we're gonna be using the same M205 compound. It's crazy how the paint after just the microfiber polishing stage, how it looked really good, but it was only when I brought the light up to the paint that you saw the defects. Well, the same thing goes for after you're polishing the paint with the foam pad. The foam pad paired with the M205 will remove those holograms or micro scratches that are in the paint. However, if you don't use the foam polishing pad paired with the M205 for long enough, you will still have some of those scratches left in the paint. Now, don't be worried. It just means that you need to put a little bit more work into that section of paint until you get the amazing reflection that you're looking for. If you guys are looking for a video that's gonna be completely regarding polishing paint, what to do, what products to use, what to buy, you guys can check the link in the description box because I made a video a while ago just regarding that. If you guys are new to the paint correcting stage or even if you guys wanna learn an extra something or two, you guys can click that link that's in the description box and it's going to teach you guys a decent amount. After going ahead and polishing the car, the paint looks so much better than before. Now what's nice about this is that the car doesn't look like a $500 piece of junk anymore. We removed all the surface contaminants and most of the imperfections in the paint. Now if you want, you can do the exact same procedure to the windows and all the glass that you have on the car. So if you have surface contaminants like this, and you can actually see the water spots and stuff like that. You can polish the glass with the same kind of polish and pads that we were using for the paint, but you can also purchase ones that are intended for glass. So when we were working with the paint, we used the polisher, we used a pad, and we used our polish. Similarly, to do the same procedure and clean out the windows, what we're gonna be using is a Griot's Garage, Garage Garage, however you wanna call it. This company here, they have a pad that's meant specifically for windows and they also have a fine polish. If your windows aren't too bad, you'd use that, but if they're very bad, you use this right here. This is for glass that's heavily marked with water spots. So I'm gonna be using this guy right here with this pad on our polisher. So we don't need this pad on the machine, we're gonna take this one off, replace it with this, and then get working on the windows. To take care of the glass, you're going to wanna do the same overlapping passes just like how we were correcting the paint. Polishing glass is going to be a lot more forgiving than polishing paint as the clear coat on the paint is a lot softer versus the hardness of glass. With that being said, you can also use a household drill or even you can do this procedure by hand to get this done. However, I wouldn't suggest doing either of those methods to take care of the paint. Now when the contamination on the glass is removed, you can buff off any excess polish with a microfiber towel. You can tell when they're done by how the glass reacts with the water. Now I haven't done the passenger side yet, however you can see how the water reacts and how it streaks on top of the minerals and the deposits that are on the window when you use a microfiber towel and wipe it. You're also gonna be able to notice those same streak marks and the same discoloration when you use those wipers at nighttime when it's raining. Now notice the driver's side. The window stays crystal clear when the water is wiped off the surface. It's going to do the exact same kind of thing when you're driving. You're not going to have any streaking and it's going to be a lot safer. I find that this is one of the most important parts of an exterior detail, as you'll be increasing visibility and clarity out of the windshield, making the car safer to drive. 
Now once you're done, you'll see all the grime that's lifted off of the windshield because it's now on the polishing pad. And you can see how much crap we actually removed. What's cool about this product is that you can not only use this on your windshield, but you can also use it on passenger windows like the front and rear windows. And also if your car is equipped with a sunroof, you can use it on there as well to remove any kind of contamination or grime that you have on the surface. After you go through all of that effort to make the car look this nice and clean, it's not a half bad idea to go ahead and put some sort of protection on the vehicle. If you want the paint to last a long time, if you want the glass to stay crystal clear, if you want those tires to look super black, there are a bunch of different products that you guys can use that are on the market to serve that purpose. Now, if you guys are familiar with this channel, you'll know that I am a firm believer of ceramic coatings. Now, if I was gonna be keeping this car for a long time, this was my vehicle, what I would do to ensure that it gets the best protection possible is ceramic coatings. So you can apply some to the paint, to fabrics, to leather, and to even glass. So you can use any of these products to get by and that will give you the best form of protection against all the elements. Now, even if you don't wanna spend that much money, there are still great options like regular waxes that you guys can buy at your local store for cheap, Rain-X for the glass. These are great products that keep the car A, looking good, and B, for the glass, it'll make it so that the water will bead right off and you won't even have to use your wipers. It makes driving it in any kind of wet condition a lot safer. Alternatively, there are also other products that you guys can use if you wanted to say, protect your dash, if you wanna dress up your tires, if you wanna restore old trim. You guys can use products like this as well. However, what I'm gonna be doing today in this video is a little bit different. So my little brother came across a product that is very good. I've tried it on a couple different cars and I love how it turns out. You don't need to put a lot of work into it to get it so that it's well protected and it takes two seconds to apply this on your vehicle. So what I would basically do is once you have it like this, rinse the entire vehicle down. Now it doesn't matter, you can also apply this coating on a car that is not fully polished like this, but what you would do is you basically give the whole car a wash and then you would apply this on the car. Now I'll show you how exactly to do that. So once the car looks this great, you're going to need two things to apply this. So you're first going to need a hose, and after that, you're going to need this product here from CarPro. It's called Hydro O2 Light. It's a wipeless silica spray. So what you do with it is, well, you put this aside for now, but we're gonna grab the hose and rinse the entire vehicle down so everything is wet. So once everything's dripping wet just like this, what we're going to do next is grab our spray and literally just spray this over everything. Now what's going to happen, notice that you start seeing it bead. Well, you're gonna do this for a couple panels at a time. Make sure you cover everything. And then once you're done, all that you do is rinse it off. And I'll show you how incredible the paint looks and how it reacts with the water afterwards. It's really that easy of a coating to apply. You literally just spray it on and then rinse it off with water. Now you can repeat this exact same procedure to the entire vehicle. So if you wanna protect your paint, you wanna protect your windows, you wanna protect your side mirrors, you can protect everything by doing this exact same procedure. So it's a really nice product. It doesn't last as long as a ceramic coating. However, how the water reacts with it is very similar to a ceramic coating. A ceramic coating costs a little bit more than this product and it takes a little bit more work to apply. However, this here is a much easier option to get pretty much the same kind of thing. Now, as I said, it doesn't last as long, but you can see for yourself how awesome the water reacts with the paint. You can see that it basically just glides off and doesn't ever want to actually stick. That also makes the drying procedure a lot easier. So if you have water on your paint, you can use a towel, you can use a leaf blower, you can use an air compressor. You can use whatever you want, but the water just wants to fly right off because this coating is between the water and the paint. So after putting in all that awesome work, this is how the Audi looks. Now, it all depends on how much time and effort you guys wanna put into your car, but for my job, what I did here, I spent a couple days detailing this only because I also had to get camera angles and I had to show you guys everything that I'm doing. So it took me a couple days to do the inside and out, but if I were to do this like on the side, if I didn't have a camera or whatever, I would probably be able to get this done in a matter of a day, day and a half at most. But look at how awesome this thing looks. This doesn't look like a $500 beater at all. 
So the car is fully cleaned, it was clayed, it was polished, and it's now protected. Now you guys can also choose what kind of layer of protections you want on the car. That will ultimately make a big difference as to how long it's going to stay looking like this. But look how good it looks. Now if you guys have also stayed till the end of this video, you guys are, in, you guys are going to be in for a little treat. And I'll show you why, probably in a matter of about 5 seconds, once I get to the other side of the car. So the car looks great, but as you can tell, one second. One second, do you guys see the little treat yet? What is that? What is that? That's Lucas' car. That's gonna be for a different video, but because you guys have stayed this long into this video, I wanna show you guys a little bit of something that's, you know, a little bit of a behind the scene thing that wasn't really planning on showing for this video. But it's here, Luca got a new car. But the Audi looks amazing, I have to say. So it, it all depends on how much work you guys wanna put into this. So if you guys wanna do a simple wash to make your car look better, Awesome, do it. By all means, take care of it that way. But if you are OCD, these are some of the steps that you guys can do to make a $500 car not look like a $500 car. So I've gotta say, I'm pretty happy that I'm done working on this thing because it has taken a little bit of work to make it look this nice. It does mean that this car is no longer needing work. However, even at the end of the day, I didn't make this a show car, so like there are still a couple imperfections, like on the bottom of the door, there is a little bit of rust showing, same thing with the back side of the fender, but it still looks so much better than how it looked before. This doesn't look like it's neglected, it doesn't look like this was mistreated, and if, even if you go to the inside of the car, it doesn't look like, oh, I lied, it doesn't look like little kids have absolutely destroyed the interior, even though there were kids in the back. So if, it all depends on how much work you guys want to do. but. These are just some results that you guys can get. Now, if you guys remember, the before was actually pretty disgusting. The paint was very scratched. There was a lot of contamination on the paint, and it just goes to show what you can do. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what kind of car you have. It can be a cheap beater, it can be a really nice car. But if you don't take care of it, it's not going to look like a nice car. So, even if you buy a car for $500, this just goes to show that you can take care of it and you can make it look like it's worth so much more. Now I guarantee, let alone fixing the mechanical parts of this car aside, I will easily be able to get more than my money back when I go to sell this thing. So because it looks nice and it looks shiny, it looks like it's well taken care of. It looks like someone has definitely put in the time and effort to keep it looking great, as you can tell. However, that just means that it'll benefit me more than the previous owner. So because they didn't really take care of it and they neglected it, that just means that this is an area that I'll be able to sell this for a little bit more money. Now the car aside, if you guys want to find out any more of the techniques or procedures that I used for this video, you guys can find more information in the description box. I have other videos that I've made that are going to be a little bit more in depth than what I did today. However, there's more information down there, so be sure to check that out. Anyways guys, if you like the video, share it, give it a thumbs up. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.